Uh, one other thing I wanted to share with you, I thought this was just absolutely brilliant. Leslie Salzillo, I'm, I'm guessing, or maybe it's Salzillo, S-A-L-Z-I-L-L-O, Leslie is her first name. I'm assuming it's a, it's a she. Well, in fact, it is. She mentions that in the article. Uh, writes this amazing letter to her mother. And I'm assuming this is actually straight up, that this is an actual true letter, although it may be, you know, it may be theater. But it's so brilliant that I just wanted to share a, a little bit of this. She starts out, she's writing, I didn't write, oh, she's, she, oh, in fact, she comes right out and says, I didn't write this, I wish I did. The way this woman uh, levels Republicans is stunning. Oh, it's Ms. Anderson. Anderson wrote this letter. And, and uh, in the letter, and you can, you can find all this over at Daily Kos, the Dear Mom letter, right? In the letter, she says, Dear Mom, you won't comprehend this because you have stage six dementia, but things need to change. The nice congressmen in Washington want to free us from government dependency so we can make better health care choices without the stigma of taking handouts from society. So, Mom, about your Medicare aged and disability waiver that pays me 40 do, for, uh, a 40-hour-a-week pittance to care for you at home 24-7, the new HHS secretary and Medicaid chief sent our governor a letter that says people on Medicaid should seek employment if they want to keep those benefits. Now, this may sound unfair, Mom, considering that you're 89, your bladder and bowel incontinent, you're unable to walk unassisted, and you often lapse into episodes of uncontrollable whimpering. But if the government decides it's for the best, you'll, we all need to buck up and contribute our fair share. After all, your 50-year career as a nurse doesn't necessarily entitle you to a free ride. I'll probably need to get a real job, too, because I exploit the system. Never mind that your care would cost the state $78,000 a year in a nursing home versus the $16,000 a year it pays me to care for you. Leave the math to those smart fellows in Washington who understand the big government should stop controlling our lives. The important thing is we'll have the freedom to choose, and we won't impose an unfair tax burden on millionaires in the medical industrial complex. Once I start to stop taking handouts, Mom, I won't be home with you. We should bolster the economy by hiring attendant care, but it's cost more than I can earn. And Medicare won't cover it because those warm-hearted legislators support family values like looking after our own. You'll enjoy being home all alone uh, all day, Mom. You, you don't really need regular meals or clean depends. And when you have one of your falls, you can rest quietly on the floor in a puddle of urine until I get off work. Those dear congressmen gave us other options, too, such as permanently placing you in a facility to die more quickly and efficiently. Here's another choice. I can stay home and attend you for free. We'll do fine on your Social Security income by sacrificing a few luxuries like groceries, property taxes, electricity, and the car. There's a bonus, Mom. I won't be forced to maintain health insurance. Remember Obamacare that saved my life through early cancer screening? The Republicans have devised a better plan. Because I'm over 50 and I earn $150 a year above the Medicaid cutoff, my annual premium will increase by roughly $6,000. But... I can choose to opt out. I'll still have access, but not be victimized by, by the enslaving tax subsidy that let me afford coverage for the first time in 25 years. I'm excited about returning to indigent emergency room treatment and boosting insurance industry profits while taxpayers shoulder the cost instead. With so many great options, it's hard to decide, but here's our new plan, Mom. Under Trump Care, I'll choose to lose health coverage, seek a minimum wage job, and dump you in a nursing home. Between the cost of facility care, a couple of ER visits, and perhaps one minor surgery for me a year, and the food stamps and heating assistance I'll need once you and your Social Security income leave the household, I estimate we'll save the government roughly a negative $350,000 over the next five years. Multiply that by the millions of people who will lose coverage, and you can appreciate what a sensible and economic plan the Republicans have devised. You'll be proud to receive depersonalized institutional care instead of burdening society in the comfort of your family. The, fat, the facility gets your Social Security check, and Medicare and Medicaid will cover the balance until you hit the newly proposed block grant funding cap. If you're still alive, then we're unsure what will happen, but we can trust Congress to do what's right. I hear they're formulating a plan to ship the poor, elderly, and chronic ill to Arctic ice flows. It's called the Trump, polar, the, the Trump Tower North, the last resort. You might even get to see polar bears before they become extinct. Won't that be fun? I'm so happy that the government wants to stop interfering in our lives. Love your freeloading daughter. P.S. Mom, if you do need a job to keep that Medicaid, I thought of a placement for someone who can't function properly, has no grasp of reality, and relies on government entitlements. 
435 congressional seats will open up next year. You appear to be perfectly qualified. This is absolutely brilliant. And a tip of the hat to Ms. Anderson, who wrote this, and, uh, and to uh, Leslie, who brought it to our attention over at Daily Kos. I, I just, I, I thought that was great.